a student performs two reactions. Reaction one, 10 gram of magnesium ribbon with excess of two mole per decimeter cube of, so excess, right? Five gram of magnesium powder with, okay, so powder in ribbon. So which will be faster? This is gonna be faster, but it's more quantity. It will also produce, I am not the smartest man, am I? The powdered one will be faster and this one is going to be slower because it's one solid ribbon and but this is going to produce more volume of hydrogen I think that's what you're measuring and this is going to produce less TK. So experiment one is slower but uh, produces more and the second one okay let's take a look okay this experiment one is slow but they're both producing the same amount that's not gonna happen this is out producing the same amount okay C different amount reaction one is they're actually at the same rate they're stopping at the same rate that means uh, they're both powdered form that's out okay D is slower definitely two is much faster but produces less uh, correct answer is correct answer is D which statement about catalyst catalysts is correct for a typical equilibrium reaction catalyst can be either inorganic or an organic species they're normally metals transition metals make better catalysts but I guess they can be doing like I don't like this um, they're normally transition elements Transition elements. That's what we know. Because iron, nickel, vanadium, five oxide, it's a compound, but vanadium is a catalyst. A catalyst does not take part in the reaction. Yeah, it takes part in it, but it's left unchanged, right? A catalyst only speeds up the forward reaction, also speeds up the backward reaction. So equilibrium. Catalyst provides the energy required to start a reaction. It reduces the energy. So I guess we're going with A. A is the best statement here. Which pair of compounds could be used in the preparation of calcium sulfate? Calcium sulfate. Calcium carbonate is insoluble, so that won't work. This is not going to work for you. Calcium chloride and ammonium sulfate. Hmm. Yeah, both are soluble, so this could work. B is our most likely answer. Calcium hydroxide is insoluble. Barium sulfate is insoluble. This is your precipitate. Barium added to sulfate, right? This is a white precipitate. You should know this. That's why they're asking you. That's why it's here. This is insoluble, right? Calcium nitrate and lead sulfate. So calcium nitrate is soluble, but lead sulfate is not. Correct answer is B. The oxide of an element X increases the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Okay. At the end of the reaction, the oxide of X is unchanged. Which details are those of X? Huh? The oxide of an element X increases the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, at the end of the reaction, the oxide of X is unchanged. So X has to be a transition element. I think that's what they're going for. We have to match the proton number to the periodic table and figure it out. So X has to be a transition element. Transition and match the transition element. So looking at the periodic table, this is argon. And then we have 20 is calcium. Calcium. Then 25 is actually manganese. 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 You know, fun fact, manganese is the same thing you add to ice cream to give it that mangoish flavor. That's why it's called manganese. Uh, 82, 82 is lead, right? 
So C and D, I'm joking about manganese. Of course, it's probably poisonous. Don't take me seriously. Okay, lead is, has the correct mass number and manganese has a mass number of 55. That's also correct. I'm not sure why I'm worrying about lead. Manganese is a real transition element. All right, the correct answer is C. An alloy of copper and zinc is added to an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid. Which observations are correct? So the residue, zinc will react whereas copper will not react. Copper will not react, zinc will react. And uh, let's see, the filtrate solution, zinc dissolved in it will be colorless and, and not blue, right? And the residue is going to be pinkish, right? Because copper is pink in color, the metal is going to be. So it probably looks red brown because it's not the prettiest copper around. Correct answer is D. Why is carbon used in the purification of drinking water? It desalinates the water, disinfects the water, filters out solids, remove the taste and odors, and that's why you use it. You know, if you have a smelly car, you can actually throw charcoal in it, and over time the smell will go away. Uh, I was told that by my car mechanic. I don't know if it works out. But that's how I remember. Carbon is used to take out odors. All right, the diagram shows a simple lab experiment to collect a gas. What is the gas? Uh, chlorine, carbon, hydrogen. Okay, so this is like a, that uh, inverted gas, gas jar, right? So it's meant to collect gases which are less, less dense than air. So people don't tell you this, I think. Air, it has an approximate average MR because it's a mixture. It has a close to an average MR of 28. So anything roughly heavier or roughly lighter than 28 is in a sink or uh, rise in air, right? So average MR. Let me just write that down. Average MR, right? And hydrogen out of all of them will rise in air because it has an MR of 2, whereas of 2, whereas carbon dioxide is 44, chlorine is 71, hydrogen chloride is 36.5, right? So hydrogen is the best one. Titration of an acid against a base is a method often used to prepare <coughs> in the preparation of salts. Which property of acid, base, and salt all require? So they all need to be soluble for it to work. Soluble, soluble, soluble. Then you have your base, which needs to be soluble, soluble. Then you have your uh, salt, which needs to be soluble. Correct answer is D. Which element is sodium? Now, sodium is one of those metals you can cut with a knife. So I'm going to guess it has a very, you know, soft, uh, low melting point compared to metals. It is a solid still. It's a good conductor. So let's start with that. It's a good conductor. That's the most popular one, right? I'm going to say its melting point is close to this one. I'm pretty sure it's 98. Versa. Density is actually less dense than water, isn't it? Because it floats on water when you kind of react it. So the correct answer is D. Which substances can react together to give off hydrogen? So calcium oxide in water actually dumps the product. When calcium oxide reacts with water, it'll form, uh, so it's inert. It doesn't, it's not even soluble, right? In water, copper 
does not react with an acid but other metal as well so this is out first one is out this is out copper again will not react magnesium actually does do it with steam it's interesting that's a, this is a very a level thing you're meant to memorize equations and whatnot but yeah magnesium does it reacts with steam to form uh, give off hydrogen and forms magnesium oxide whereas if you throw it in water it actually forms magnesium hydroxide in cool water interesting correct answer is D which substances will burn in air and give carbon dioxide among amongst the combustion products calcium carbonate when he it won't burn calcium carbonate doesn't burn ethane ethanol methanol so two three and four D is our answer an aqueous solution of compound of formula C2H4O2 reacts with sodium carbonate uh, liberating carbon dioxide so uh, this compound this organic compound has to be a carboxylic acid so I am looking for an acid there we go there we go D is an ester B is a freak of nature and A is a diol with a double bond interesting uh, C is our correct answer this is a question that's repeated from an older year hydrogen can form both H plus ions and H minus ions which one of the following statement below is correct an H plus ion has more protons than an H ion is the same protons fun fact an H plus ion is actually just a proton it's just a proton because a proton is just one proton with a with an electron around it right so when it's H plus it loses the electrons so it's just a proton fun fact an H plus ion has no electrons hmm. that's actually true I guess they tweaked the question a bit that's actually true an H minus ion has one more electron no it has two more uh, compared to an hydrogen atom it would have one more right an H minus ion has, is formed when hydrogen atom loses gains this is incorrect as well so B I liked this question uh, they tweaked it a bit could confuse a few people B a dark shiny solid X sounds like metal conducts metal definitely oxygen combines with X to form a gaseous oxide what is it oh it could be graphite as well of course uh, graphite conducts electricity all of that gaseous oxide definitely it's a metal oxides are, are not gaseous iron is out lead is out iodine won't conduct electricity a is our answer the energy profile for a forward reaction of a reversible reaction is shown which row collect correctly shows the sign of both the activation energy and the type of the enthalpy change for a reversible reaction for the reversible reaction the enthalpy change is going to be exact opposite but negative so enthalpy change will be negative negative value and activation is going to be from whatever is reacting so this would be for the reversible reaction this would be the the products would lie the reactants would lie here for the forward reaction it's reactants are here forming products but for the reversible reaction it's going from reactants to products so this is the activation energy and the activation energy you can clearly see as positive I guess there's never a chance that activation energy is ever negative interesting fact so activation energy will always be positive if you want to rectify something positive positive it's actually exothermic so correct answer is D which graph represents how the rate of reaction varies with time when excess calcium carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid yeah um the rate actually is going to go down over time not constantly because it's all dependent on the concentration b is our best bet which equation in the blast furnace extraction of iron is not a redox reaction 
Uh, there we go. It's A. I don't see any changes in uh, charges. So this is not a redox reaction. Over here, this is definitely a redox reaction because elements are turning into a compound. The elements will have a zero oxidation state. Compounds will not have a zero oxidation state. The elements in a compound, like a basic rule of redox, right? And that's true for B. If you see elements anywhere, here's another element. So both B and C are out. This is actually the equation for reduction of iron. So iron has an oxidation state of 3 plus, is turning into iron with an oxidation state of 0. Oxidation number is decreasing. This is reduction. Right? And the correct answer is A. I already had it written here. Aircraft bodies are made from an aluminum alloy because pure aluminum is too soft. And that's true. Have you seen aluminum? It's pretty soft. You don't want to. Yeah, but it's actually very light and also very resistant to corrosion. So it makes ideal. You know, you'll never see rust on an airplane. You'll see it on ships and whatnot. Because ships are not made of aluminum. Uh, hey, I wonder why they don't make ships out of aluminum. I guess they don't care. Pure aluminum, because of its high melting point, aluminum is actually doesn't have too high of a melting point. You can just make it out of iron. Aluminum, because but it's not pure aluminum, right? But that is the reason is correct. Pure aluminum because of its that's also. Like a, not the reason, but a good value addition to our airplane material management. Which natural process can cause nitrogen oxide to be formed in the atmosphere? Bacter bacterial decay of plants, lightning activity, yes. Photosynthesis, respiration, nope. And correct answer is B. One way to remember it is nitrogen has is very stable. It has a triple bond and high activation energy is required to break this bond and make it react with oxygen. So that can only be done in high energy areas where like lightning is one such place. And the other one is car combustion engines because combustion engines get really hot and they also suck up suck in air to you know take oxygen and cool itself down so nitrogen is present in those heats high heats